Hello everyone. So, as you know, today we are going to discuss about paraphrase generation in NLP. So, let's get started. So, as you all know, what is paraphrase generation? As you can see the topic, paraphrase generation is a unique technique to paraphrase some sentence. For example, I will say a sentence that my name is Adi Jain. I can paraphrase it to many different languages like I am Adi Jain uh, or Adi Jain is my name or anything, right? So, in today's uh, you can say era, paraphrase generation is very important. As you can see, there are many, we are having many documents where we need to paraphrase. For example, there are uh, two or three pages of documents that we need to paraphrase. For some example, and you know Quillbot. Quillbot is a very good example of doing paraphrase generation. I know why we use Quillbot to hide plagiarism, but yeah, what is it, it is, is it doing? It is only doing what? Paraphrase generation. So, let's Give, take a brief about paraphrase generation by some of my videos. Let's get started. So, paraphrase generation is the task of generating an output sentence that preserves the meaning of the input sentence with variations in word, choice, and grammar. So, as you can see the definition, paraphrase is doing what? It is basically doing a changes in grammar, changes in syntax of a language, or you can say doing some variations, right? So, as you all know, the paraphrase that I am doing is by rule based, by changing some grammar, rule based and all. But what if you want to make machine learn how to paraphrase, right? Is it interesting, right? So we are giving the input to a machine and machine itself is transforming this and that sentence to, to make it paraphrase and to make a meaningful sentence that is also correct in terms of grammar, in terms of language and in terms of vocabulary, right? So we have two different methods. One is rule based, second is machine learning based. So rule based, as you can see, rules are created manually to transform the original text into semantically equivalent text or paraphrase, right? Basically, rule based technique you can say by changing the uh, placement of prepositions, nouns, verbs and all, right? But now we want to make it learn by machine learning based. So how we can do it? So there are many different libraries, many different tools, many different, you can say, models that are currently doing paraphrase generation. But the main question that arises is, are they all correct or you can say what are the accuracies of these models so today we are going to learn these several models and different searching techniques that might use in these models so at first let's have a brief about NLP because we all know the machine learning task that's related to NL uh, language is all comes under the natural language processing so NLP is a uh, you can see the field in, in artificial intelligence that give machine the ability to read, understand, and derive meaning from the human languages. We have different applications of machine uh, NLP. You can see here, but today we are going to focus on main topic of paraphrase generation. So yeah, at first today we are going to learn about transformers. So basically, I will not cover in detail transformers because transformer is a very big topic and you have to learn it by your own but I can re uh, refer you transformers by J. Alabar it is a very good source to learn about transformers but to give a gist of the transformers I can say the transformer what is it is a, basically an encoder decoder machine right basically what is encoder decoder encoder decoder is the translation of from one language to different language basically you are giving the input and you are getting the output in different language right so transformer works on the that phenomenon only and in transformers we have different uh, layers like you can hear you, you can see here we are giving input embeddings right inputs that we have attention layer and, and for your information transformers was first introduced in the research paper that is attention is all you need right then trans and then we have encoder decoder and we have softmax layer and before soft, uh, softmax we have linear layer so these are different specifications of transformers you can better learn it the website that I refer to you by J. Alimar, right? So basically what I have done in the project we will learn and where I have used transformers in different topics, right? Yeah. So this is some basic, you can say the photograph of transformers, how transformers are working. For example, we have given an input in different language and we are getting the output in English, right? So what is transformers doing? Transformers basically share potential layer, then feed forward neutral layer, then encoder decoder. That's all. Right? That's very simple. But believe me, it's not that simple. The inner core of transformers is very difficult to understand, but I know you might, you will. 
So, next topic. So here is the main part that I have done my project. Uh, I have also done this project in my internship during the RDO. So here is the different things that we are going to learn today. We have generating the text, right? So to generate the text, our machine model learn, our machine learning model is using different searching techniques. So there are major three techniques like one is greedy search, second beam search, and third is top case top case sampling. So what greedy search is doing? Greedy search simply selects the word with the highest priority as, as its next word. For example, you can say we have, I have a sentence. I want to make it. Uh, I have a different jumble words and I want to make a sentence from it, right? Then what's the highest priority of the first word to be in a sentence? What the subject word like the I or you can say where, right? These are some words in the highest pro uh, probability to come at the first place. So criticizer simply does this uh, makes the sentence by the probability only. Then we have beam search. So beam search basically re reduces the risk of missing hidden high probability word sequences by keeping the most likely num number beams of hypothesis at each time step and eventually choosing the hypothesis that has the overall highest probability. So I know the definition seems little crazy or French, right? But the thing is, beam search. What is what is it doing? It's like a new based uh, probability algorithm system, right? Because uh, in beam search we have different, uh, you can say ratios from which we are doing the searching techniques. And in next we have top case sampling. In top case sampling, the most likely next words are filtered, and the probability mass is redistributed among only those k next words. So. Top case sampling is basically, you know, we are making a cluster of k words, then we are redistributing it among those k next words, and we are making a probability. So, as you can all see, in all these search techniques, now basically the game is all about probability, right? Finding different probability and all. How to do that? At the last, we have different metrics to find the score or to find the accuracy, and the most common metric that we have is blue score. So basically, blue score is bilingual evaluation and the study is an algorithm for evaluating the quality of text which has been machine translated from one natural language to another. So basically, blue score, right, is the you can say the performance metrics to find accuracy of our uh, you can say the generated sentence. So to find the blue scope, we have different uh, parameters like blue, precision, uh, gravity penalty, length ratio, translation length, and reference length. And the limitation in bias, uh, I have written here, you can study it, right? Hot. And here is the main research that I came up with. So you can see here I have made the search with different coding techniques that I already covered like first BD search, like second BB search, beam search and third top case sampling. So I use the blue score matrix to apply it on my model, machine learning model. Uh, and there are different blue score matrix that I was getting. So the highest uh, you can say the score that I was getting is with the beam search technique. So according to my study and according to my observation, I can say that beam search is beam search deep learning model is doing the best uh, output, is giving the best output on the database that I have used in my model. And at the last, we have different transformers architectures with which I have used. For example, we have GPT, we have Pegasus, we have bottom up method. And one of the most used, you can say, the architectures that is, is Pegasus and GPT. And if you also know, Google also introduced BERT earlier, which is also doing great in this field, like parameter generation and uh, you can say uh, translation of different languages to another language. At the last, my aim will be the training model on large data sets. For example, you all know the deep learning model learns with the number of data sets that we are going to use. So, data set second uh, to make the our blue score performance metric more accurate so that it can you know generate the better results and third better decoding techniques for model generation. Right? Then, thank you so much for thank you so much for listening to me. I am. Do give, yeah, thank you so much. And for more videos and more benefit generation in uh, natural language processing, and I will be definitely doing more insights and studying more phenomena, what we
we can do and how we can train our model better thank you for listening